What is a parasitic drag? Force when an airplane wing, automobile, or any other object moves through a fluid. What is a screw? Simple machine like an inclined plane wrapped around an axle. What are possible replacements or additions to the standard model? One proposed replacement is called supersymmetry. Each boson in the standard model has a supersymmetric fermion partner particle, or sparticle. And each fermion has a supersymmetric boson particle. They are called sleptons, squarks, glunios, and photinos. These sparticles must be much more massive than the standard model particles. At least 480 billion electron volts. At this time there is no direct evidence of their existence. Although the LHC might be able to reach high enough energies to find them. A second replacement is string theory. String theory requires a 10-dimensional space-time rather than the normal 4-dimensional space-time. Three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. A string is a tiny closed loop, like a rubber band. In some theories the loop can break into an open length, like a piece of yarn, but in others it cannot. Strings vibrate at characteristic frequencies, like guitar strings. Each vibration frequency corresponds to an elementary particle. If a string theory is to include fermions, quarks and leptons, supersymmetry must exist. The great advantage of string theory is that the graviton the particle that carries the gravitational force, is naturally accommodated. But, if string theory is to be a theory of quantum gravity then the size of a string must be the size of the so-called Planck length, 1.6 x 10 to 35 m. That is an unimaginably small length, 10 to 20 as large as a proton. String theories, however, contain symmetries that make their effects felt at larger distances. At this time there is no experiment that could test string theory. If supersymmetric particles are found, then string theory may garner more support. What is the difference between physical and geometrical optics? Geometrical optics deals specifically with the path that light takes when it encounters mirrors and lenses. Geometrical optics uses the ray model of light in which an arrow represents the direction light travels. The ray model does not consider the wave nature of light. Ray diagrams trace the path that light takes when it reflects and refracts in different media. Reflection occurs when light bounces off a surface, whether it is a piece of paper or a mirror. Shiny metals and very still water make good reflectors. 
creating images that resemble objects from which the light is coming. Physical optics, on the other hand, is the division of optics that depends on the wave nature of light. It involves polarization, diffraction, interference, and the spectral analysis of light waves. What is plasma? State of matter consisting of electrically charged particles. What is a torsional wave? Material is not only displaced vertically, but also twists in a wave-like fashion. What is opaque? An object that allows no light through it. When and where will there be total solar eclipses over the next few decades? The following map shows the date and location of total solar eclipses that took place from 2001 to 2010, as well as those that will take place into the year 2020. The last total solar eclipse in the United States was seen on February 26, 1979. Where is the center of gravity of a person? The center of gravity of a person depends on how that person's weight is distributed. The distribution is typically different in adult males and females. Males have more upper body mass while females have more mass in the hip region. A male's center of gravity is about 65% of his height while that for a female is about 55%. Try this. Stand facing a wall with your toes against the wall. Now try to rise to stand on your toes. What is the history of electricity? Prehistoric people valued and traded amber, a gem-like material that is petrified tree sap. Surely more than once a person would have rubbed amber on his ore. Her fur clothing and noticed that fur was attracted to the stone. Perhaps she rubbed it hard enough to produce sparks. The Greek philosopher Thales of Miletus wrote about these effects around 600 BCE. But it wasn't until 1600 CE. Some 2200 years later, that William Gilbert, 1544-1603. An English physician, named this effect electricity after the Greek name for ember, electron. Gilbert showed that sulfur, wax, glass, and other materials behaved the same way as amber. He invented the first instrument to detect what we now call the electrical charge on objects called a versarium. A pointer that was attracted to charged object. 
Gilbert also discovered that a heated body lost its charge. And that moisture prevented the charging of all bodies. In 1729, the English scientist Stephen Gray, 1666 to 1736, determined that charge, or what he called the electric virtue, could be transmitted over long distances by metals, objects that couldn't be charged. What is the ITER project? International effort to produce electricity from nuclear fusion. What are paramagnet materials? Caused by unpaired electrons in atoms. Material is attracted by magnetic fields. Many outlets have three holes. What is the purpose of each hole? Outlets have two slots, one longer than the other, and a D-shaped hole. The contacts in the shorter slot are connected to a black wire. This is the hot connection that carries the 120 volts. The contacts in the longer slot are connected to a white wire, called the neutral wire. The white wire is connected to ground in the electric distribution box. Thus there is a potential difference of 120 volts across the two contacts. The third hole is attached to a green wire that is at ground potential. What is a Doppler effect? Change in frequency of a wave that results from an object's changing position relative to an observer. What is a positron emission tomography, PET? Method of forming three-dimensional image of human body. Uses a short-lived positron emitting isotope inserted into a biologically active molecule. What determines how much a material will bend? Try to bend a ruler. Hold one end tightly on your desk and push down on the other end. You are exerting a tension force on one surface and a compressive force on the other. The amount the ruler bends depends again on the Young's modulus, Y, of the material as well as its length, L, width, W, and thickness, T. The bending, X, is proportional to the force applied, F, and the length cubed and inversely proportional to its thickness cubed or, in the form of an equation, x equals fl3 slash, t3wy. That is why the joists supporting a floor are much thicker than they are wide. 
typically wood one minus a half wide but 10 or 12 thick is used. The larger thicknesses are used if the span between supporting walls is longer. An I-beam is often used to support weight. The beam is in the shape of the letter I. The vertical member, tall and narrow. Keeps it from bending while the top and bottom members keep the vertical member from twisting. While I-beams are most often made of steel. Wood beams are now used in houses because they are stronger, lighter, and cheaper than steel. How are magnetic materials used in computers? Magnets are used in the compact motors that turn the discs in the CD or DVD. Drive and that move the laser that reads the disc to the correct position. Motors rotate the discs in a hard drive. The arm on which the read slash right head is mounted is rotated to the correct. Portion of the hard drive disc has a coil of wire on it in a magnetic field. When there is a current through the wire the force moves the arm to the correct position. The disc itself is often made of aluminum coated with an extremely thin 10 to 20 nanometers film of magnetic material that is divided into Submicrometer thick regions that are perpendicular to the surface of the disc. Each region is magnetized one way to represent a one and another way to represent at zero. A tiny coil in the reed slash right head carries the current that magnetizes the regions. Does velocity affect distance and time? Einstein's special theory of relativity shows that both distance and time change with velocity. Einstein reached this conclusion by noting that one must define methods of measuring both distance and time. The result is that as objects move near the speed of light their length in the direction of motion, shrinks and their internal clocks that measure time run slower. The amount of change is described by a factor called y, gamma, which is always larger than 1. Thus the time given by a moving clock is yt, where t is the time shown by a fixed clock. And length is given by Li, where L is the length of the fixed object. How does the air become a conductor? When the charges have enough energy to begin to ionize the air of the free. Electrons will form a negatively charged stepped leader that will go from the cloud and make its zigzagged and often branched trip toward the ground. This process is slow, taking a few tenths of a second. The leaders are also weak and usually invisible. The atoms in the air near the ground. Feeling the attractive force from the electrons in the step leader, separate into ions and free electrons. The positively charged air ions from tall objects, such as trees, buildings, and towers leave in streamers. When a step leader and streamer meet, a channel of ionized air is created. 
allowing large amounts of charge to move between the cloud and the ground. The return stroke of charge back to the cloud is the brightest part of the process. What is a scalar quantity? A quantity that has only magnitude, size. How does a pinhole camera work? A pinhole camera is typically made from a box with a small pinhole in one side of the box and a screen on the other side. The pinhole is so small that only a very small number of light rays can go through it. The diagram on page 211 shows how a pinhole creates a reproduction of the object on the screen. Note that it is not an image because light rays do not converge on the screen. Pinhole cameras are easy to make and are often used during solar eclipses because it is very dangerous to look directly at the sun, during an eclipse or otherwise. With the sun at your back, point the hole up toward the sun and View the image of the moon passing in front of the sun on the screen. What is a resistor? Device used in electrical and electronic circuits to put a definite resistance in a circuit. What is the middle ear? Between outer and inner ear. Includes the eardrum, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. The three smallest bones in the human body, and the oval window on the inner ear. How did the idea that the Sun was the center of the solar system arise? Aristotle's and Ptolemy's view that the Sun, planets, and stars all revolved around Earth was accepted for almost 18 centuries. Nicholas Copernicus, 1473 to 1543, a Polish astronomer and cleric, was the first person to publish a book arguing that the solar system is a heliocentric, sun-centered system instead of a geocentric, earth-centered system. In the same year as his death, he published on the revolutions of the celestial spheres. His book was dedicated to Pope Paul III. The first page of his book contained a preface stating that a heliocentric system is useful for calculations, but may not be the truth. This preface was written by Andreas Oziander without Copernicus knowledge. It took three years before the book was denounced as being in contradiction with the Bible. And it was banned by the Roman Catholic Church in 1616. The ban wasn't lifted until 1835.
What is a charging by induction? Results when a conductor is first polarized by a charged object that doesn't touch it. Then one polarity of charge is removed from conductor. What is an apparent weightlessness? Occurs when an object is in free fall. Force on object in direction opposite gravity is zero. How far away was that lightning? When a lightning bolt goes from cloud to cloud or cloud to ground it suddenly heats the air through which it passes. This sudden increase in temperature causes thunder that occurs at the same time as the lightning. Although it takes virtually no time to see the lightning. Depending upon the observer's distance from the lightning, it can take quite a while to hear the thunder. The speed of sound at room temperature is about 1,100 feet per second. A mile is 5,280 feet, so it takes about 5 seconds for sound to travel 1 mile. So, to determine how far away lightning has struck, when you see the lightning, Count the number of seconds it takes before hearing thunder. Divide the number of seconds between the lightning and thunder by 5. To determine how many miles away the thunder and lightning occurred. For example, if you see a flash of lightning and approximately 10 seconds later you hear the thunder. Divide the 10 seconds by the 5 seconds per mile to find that the lightning occurred 2 miles away. What is nearsightedness and what can be done to correct it? Nearsighted vision means that a person can only clearly see objects that are relatively near the eye. Images from distant objects are focused in front of the retina. Nearsightedness, or myopia, is most often caused by a cornea that bulges out too much. The lens cannot be flattened enough to compensate, and so distant objects appear fuzzy. To correct for the short focal length of the lens. A concave lens is used to make the light rays diverge just enough so that the image will fall on the retina. So contact lenses to correct for myopia are thicker at the edges than at the center. What is a converging lens? has at least one convex side. Its shape causes the entering light rays to converge, that is, come closer together. Why is it better for a discus to be thrown into the wind instead of with the wind? In most sports, throwing or traveling with the wind at your back, called tailwind, is a lot easier than working against the wind, 
called a headwind. In football, teams flip a coin to determine who will be kicking with the wind. In sailing, it is easier and faster to travel perpendicular to or with the wind and takes more skill to travel against the wind. In track, the world record in the 100 meter dash could more easily be broken if running with a strong tailwind. In most sports, having the wind at your back can be a major advantage. In the field event of discus throwing, however, the advantage comes when there is a headwind. In fact, it has been documented that a discus can travel up to 8 meters, 26 feet. Further while experiencing a headwind of only 10 m s meters per second. Although the discus still experiences a drag force from the headwind. The lift that the discus gets from pressure differences over and under the disc is substantially more significant than the drag force. Because the discus will remain in the air longer, it will travel farther. What is the constant in Coulomb's law? K equals 9.0 x 109 nm2 slash c2. What is the normal force, n? Force pushing two surfaces together. How do cell phones work? Cell phones use the UHF part of the electromagnetic spectrum. 800 to 900 megahertz, 1700 to 1800 megahertz, and 2100 to 2200 megahertz. The service area for a cell phone provider is divided up into hexagonally shaped cells. Each one served by base stations with antenna towers at three corners of the cell. The stations can both receive and transmit information to cell phones. The stations are connected to a network that uses fiber optic cables. When a cell phone is turned on it searches for available services according to a list stored in the phone. It selects the correct frequencies to transmit and receive data. Then sends its serial and phone numbers to the system, registering itself in that cell. The network makes sure that the phone number is part of its system and that there is money in the account to pay for a call. After registration is complete and a call is made to that phone, the network can direct the call to the correct cell. The cell phone always searches for the strongest signal from a tower. If the phone moves during the conversation, then the signal strengths will change and the phone will hand off the call to a different base station. The technology behind the cell phones we take for granted today is amazing. Transmitting and receiving messages in the electromagnetic spectrum. Cell phones automatically select and correct appropriate frequencies, send serial numbers to servers. 
and register themselves in the cell in which they are located at the time. Cell phones digitize the voice signals. Special circuits, called digital signal processors. Then compress the voice signals and insert codes that can detect errors in transmission. Compression is achieved by sending only the changes in the digital signals, not what stays the same. Cell phone systems also send many different conversations at the same time. One method, called TDMA, time division multiple access. Splits up three compressed calls and sends them together. CDMA, code division multiple access, uses TDMA to pack three calls together. And then put six more calls at two other frequencies. Each of the nine, or more. Calls is assigned a unique code so that it can be directed to the correct recipient. Spread CDMA systems use a wide band of frequencies that permit more simultaneous calls. How is an eclipse a shadow? An eclipse is created just as any other shadow, by the presence of an object in the path of light. In a lunar eclipse, Earth blocks the sun's light illuminating the moon. In a solar eclipse the moon keeps the sun's light from reaching Earth. Thus the shadow of the moon on Earth is what we call a solar eclipse. What is next red Doppler radar? Next red or next generation weather radar is one of the most recent technological breakthroughs for weather forecasting. Nexred relies on the Doppler effect to calculate the position and the velocity of precipitation. The spherical Nexred radar tower emits radar waves 360 degrees around and calculates the frequency shift of the reflected radar waves off rain, sleet, and snow. The Nexred computers then translate the information and represent the possible weather problems on a color-coded map for analysis. The maps are readily available in real time over the web. The goal and main function of Nexred Precision Radar is to save American money and lives. By predicting threatening weather problems and warning the public before tragedy strikes. Meteorologists estimate that this new tool for weather forecasting has saved millions of dollars. And many lives through its early warning systems. One of the most impressive advancements has. Been in pinpointing tornadoes and hurricanes more accurately than what was possible before Nexred. Each Nexred station scans a radius of 125 miles with excellent accuracy. And less accurately up to 200 miles. A new system, developed since 1994, is Terminal Doppler Weather Radar, or TDWR. This system, installed at 45 airports, uses radar waves with 5 cm wavelength rather than the 10 cm used in standard weather radar. As a result it can resolve objects with twice as much detail. 
permitting it to detect wind shear and microbursts. Its range, however, is half that of Nexrid and it can see through heavy rain. Radar images are available to the public at www.radar.weather.gov. Why is measurement so important for physics? While Aristotle, 384 to 322 b. C. Emphasized observation rather than measurement or experimentation. Astronomy required measurements of the locations of stars and wanderers, now known to be planets. The study of light was another early field that began to emphasize experimentation and mathematics. What contributions did Aristotle make? Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and scientist who lived for 62 years in the 4th century B. C. He was a student of Plato and an accomplished scholar in the fields of biology. Physics, mathematics, philosophy, astronomy, politics, religion, and education. In physics, Aristotle believed that there were five elements, earth, air, fire, water. And the fifth element, the quintessence, called ether, out of which all objects in the heavens were made. He believed that these elements moved in order to seek out each other. He stated that if all forces were removed, an object could not move. Thus motion, even with no change in speed or direction, requires a continuous force. He believed that motion was the result of the interaction between an object and the medium through which it moves. Through the 3rd century BCE and later, experimental achievements in physics were made in such cities as Alexandria and other major cities throughout the Mediterranean. Archimedes C-287 C-212 BCE measured the density of objects by measuring their displacement of water. Aristarchus of Samos is credited with measuring the ratio of the distances from Earth to the Sun and to the Moon, and espoused a Sun-centered system. Eratosthenes determined the circumference of Earth by using shadows and trigonometry. Hipparchus discovered the precession of the equinoxes. And finally, in the 1st century CE Claudius Ptolemy proposed an order of planetary scientists disappeared. In the 800s the rulers of the Islamic Caliphate collected as many of the remaining books as they could and had them translated into Arabic. Between then and about 1200 a number of scientists in the Islamic countries demonstrated the errors in Aristotelian physics. Included in this group is Al Hazan, IBM Shakir, Al Biruni, Al Hazini, and Al Baghdadi. Mainly members of the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. They foreshadowed the ideas that Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton would later develop more fully. Despite these challenges, Aristotle's physics was dominant in European universities into the late 17th century.
can the axis of rotation change? A toy gyroscope contains a rotating wheel. If you put it on a stand the axis moves in a circle. Why? The gravitational force pulls down on the center of mass of the wheel. Thus the gyroscope begins to rotate downward. The effect of this new torque is to cause the axis to change direction. Precession is also important for bicycles and motorcycles. If the cycle starts to tip to the right, then the rotating front wheel's axis will rotate. And the wheel will turn to the right, helping to keep the cycle from tipping over. Where are fiber optics used today? The transmission of light information through optical fibers has had a huge impact on the technological world. The medical field has benefited greatly from the use of flexible fiber optic bundles that enable the viewing of areas of the body that would otherwise be inaccessible. Communications is probably the field that is benefiting the most from the advent of fiber optic technology. Long distance telephone, computer and television signals use fiber optic cables. Some systems even use fiber optics to transmit information directly to the home or business. Fiber optics can transmit large amounts of data at high speeds permitting hundreds of television channels. Very high speed internet connections, and telephone conversations to be sent and received at the same time. What is a calorie, cow? A unit of energy that is used both to measure both thermal energy and heat. Which of the three arrangements shown below would have? The properties of a refrigerator magnet as described above? The top two wouldn't because both surfaces would act as a magnet. The top right hand arrangement would be a very weak magnet on both faces. Because the alternating poles would essentially cancel each other out. In the third drawing the sheets have been folded and then pressed together so that the poles are at only one surface. So only that surface would act like a magnet. The alternating N and S poles attract steel and stick to it. You can check this idea by taking two refrigerator magnets and holding the magnetic surfaces together and then try sliding one over the other. You'll find that they skip as first N and S poles touch each other and attract. Then the like poles try to touch each other but repel, making the magnets skip. What is angular velocity, CO? Equivalent of velocity for rotational motion.
How can you reduce the bending of a beam bridge? The simplest way to keep the roadbed from bending is to use a king post. In the illustration below. The downward force of the center of the bridge poles. Down on the vertical post. This places the diagonal braces under compression. They transmit the force to the pairs. The upward force on the post makes the net force on the post zero. It is under tension. While the king post bridge can reduce the bending in the center of the bridge, it can do nothing about bending between the pier and the bridge center. One solution is to add a second vertical post and connect the two by a horizontal member. Creating a queen post bridge. But a method that allows much more support on a longer bridge is the truss. Similar methods of translating downward forces to compression forces exerted on the piers on the ends of the bridge were known to the Romans who worked in stone and concrete. They were famous for the arches used in their massive aqueducts. One such aqueduct, the Pont du Gard, was completed in 18 BCE and was used to carry water a length of 270 meters. 886 feet, over the Garden River Valley in southern France. Cables suspending or holding up the roadbed are draped over a set of tall vertical towers called pylons. The pylons support the suspension cables from which vertical cables are attached that lift the deck. The ends of the SUS pension cables must be anchored into the ground. At each end of the bridge to exert the tension forces on the cables. The first known suspension bridge was constructed in the 7th century. CE by Mayans at their capital Ixchilan, Mexico. It spanned 100 meters. What are atoms? Smallest piece into which an element can be divided and retain its properties. What is the plum pudding model? Swarm of electrons in a positively charged sphere. How does an airplane wing create lift? The upward force on an airplane wing caused by the air moving past it is called lift. According to Newton's third law, if the air exerts an upward force on the wing, then the wing must exert a downward force on the air. There are three causes of this downward force. The first is the tilt, or angle of attack of the wing. The tilt deflects the airflow downward. The second is the Bernoulli principle. Because of the shape of the wing, the speed of the air on the top surface of the wing is faster than at the lower surface, and so the pressure is lower. Thus the downward force on the wing is reduced. The third reason is the fact that air sticks to the surface of the wing. 
the air coming off the upper surface is moving downward. This exerts an additional downward force on the air. The downward forces produce the lift needed to keep the plane airborne. Who were the first physicists? Although physics was not considered a distinct field of science until the early 19th century, people have been studying the motion, energy, and forces that are at play in the universe for thousands of years. The earliest documented accounts of serious thought toward physics, specifically the motion of the planets, dates back to the years of the Chinese, Indians, Egyptians, Mesoamericans, and the Babylonians. The Greek philosophers Plato and Aristotle analyzed the motion of objects, but did not perform experiments to prove or disprove their ideas. What is impedance matching? Impedance is the opposition to wave motion exerted by a medium. When a wave travels from one medium into another, the impedance changes, causing some of the energy of the wave to be reflected back into the original medium. Therefore not all of the wave's energy travels into the new medium. An impedance matching device between the two media allows for a smooth transition in impedance and reduces reflections. What is the Archimedes principle? An object immersed in a fluid will experience a buoyant force equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Who was the first person to explain how rainbows are formed? Newton was not the first person to understand the optical characteristics of a rainbow. In fact, it was a German monk in the early 14th century who first discovered that light refracted and reflected inside a water droplet. To demonstrate his hypothesis, the monk filled a sphere with water sent a ray of sunlight through the sphere, and observed the separation of the white light into colors along with the reflection on the back of the water droplet. What is the second law of thermodynamics? It is impossible to convert heat completely into work in a cyclic heat engine. There is always some heat output. Also, heat doesn't flow from cold to hot without work input. What does momentum mean in physics? Momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity it has both magnitude and direction. 
consider a football player a lineman. Linemen are massive. If they can run fast, then the product of their mass and velocity is their momentum, mu. The momentum is in the direction the player is moving. What is the luminous power? I response to power of light electromagnetic waves. What is a lift? Upward force on an airplane wing caused by the air moving past it. What are the two main forms of maglev transportation? The German system uses the attractive forces between electromagnets to lift. The underside of the train 15 cm, 6 inches, above its guide rail. The coils in the train and guide rail form a linear motor like an ordinary motor that has been unrolled. The only commercial operation is a train in China that transports people 30 kilometers in slightly over 7 minutes. The Japanese have taken a slightly different approach toward maglev technology. The track and train repel each other. Propulsion also uses a linear motor. Levitation works well at high speeds, but when starting and stopping traditional wheels must be used. How often do solar and lunar eclipses occur? Solar eclipses, including partial eclipses, occur more frequently than lunar eclipses. Over the entire Earth there are 2 to 5 solar eclipses per year. While the average number of lunar eclipses per year is between 1 and 2. A solar eclipse can only be observed by a narrow path on Earth's. Surface while a lunar eclipse can be seen over a much larger area. What is a sound wave? Created by some type of mechanical vibration or oscillation that forces the surrounding medium to vibrate. What is the history of measurements of the speed of light? In 1638 Galileo, 1564-1642, proposed a method of measuring the speed of light. Galileo would have one lamp and an assistant a great distance away would have a second lamp. The assistant was to uncover his lamp immediately when he saw Galileo uncover his own lamp. The speed could then be determined by measuring the time it would. Take the light to travel from Galileo to the assistant and back again. Galileo claimed to have done the experiment several 
years before 1638 but there was no record of his results. In 1667 the Academy of Sciences in Florence, Italy, carried it out between two observers a mile apart. They reported there was no measurable delay, showing that the speed of light must be extremely rapid. The first measurement of the speed of light in a laboratory was by Hippolyte Armand Fizeau. 1819 to 1896, in 1849. He used a beam of light that passed through the gaps between teeth of a rapidly rotating wheel. Was reflected from a mirror 8 kilometers away, and returned to the wheel. The speed of the wheel was increased until the returning. Light passed through the next gap and could be seen. The speed was calculated to be 315,000 km per second. Leon Foucault, 1819-1868, improved on this a year later by using a rotating mirror. In place of the wheel and found the speed to be 298,000 km per second. He also used this technique to determine that light travels slower in water than in air. The American physicist Albert Michelson, 1852 to 1931, greatly improved Foucault's measurement. Using an eight-sided rotating mirror and a plane mirror located on Mount San Antonio. 35 kilometers 114,800 feet, away from the source on Mount Wilson in California. By measuring the speed of the rotating mirror and the distance between the mirrors. Michelson made the most accurate measurement of the speed of light to that date. In 1907, he was honored by being the first American to win the Nobel Prize in Physics. In 1926 he made a new measurement that yielded 299.796 km per second with an uncertainty of 4 km per second. After Maxwell published his theory of electromagnetism it became possible to calculate the speed of light indirectly from the relationships between an electric charge and its electric field and an electric current and the magnetic field it produces. In 1907 Rosa and Dorsey obtained 299,788 km per second in this way. The uncertainty of 30 km per second made it the most precise measurement to that date. Research on microwaves used in radar during World War Two led to a new method of measuring the speed of light. By 1950 Lewis Essen reported a result of 299,792 km per second. Slightly more precise than Michelson's result. In the 1970s scientists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Boulder, Colorado succeeded in directly measuring simultaneously the wavelength and the frequency of an infrared laser. From these two measurements they could calculate the speed of light. 299,792.4562 km per second with an uncertainty of only 1.1 meters per second. This new technique prompted an investigation of the length standard. The wavelength of light from the gas krypton. The new techniques discovered that the standard was fuzzy and had to be replaced. In 1983 the Conference Générale de Poids et Missouris decided to fix the speed of light in a vacuum at 299. 
792.458 km per second and define the meter as the distance light travels in 1 slash 29979245 of a second. What if the tool or appliance has a three prong plug but you have only two slot outlets? Do not use the appliance if you do not have the proper outlet for the device. Cutting off the grounding prong will defeat the safety feature of the separate ground wire. What happens if you look at a mirror while lying down? Now left and right are not reversed your chin is on the same side of both you and your image. But if your right eye was higher than your left, then in the image the left eye will be higher. How efficient are levers? The only place where friction can occur with a lever is at the pivot point. So, as long as friction is minimal there, the lever can approach 100% efficiency. What is a volt, V? Unit of measurement of potential difference or voltage. What is a sonic boom? Caused by a shock wave produced when an aircraft reaches the speed of sound. How were the first mirrors made? People have seen their reflections in water for hundreds of centuries. But some of the earliest signs of human-made brass and bronze mirrors have been mentioned in the Bible and in ancient Egyptian, Greek, and Roman literature. The earliest glass mirrors, backed with shiny metal, appeared in Italy during the 14th century. The original process for creating a glass mirror was to Coat one side of glass with mercury and polished tinfoil. The German chemist Justus von Liebig, 1803-1873, in 1835 developed a method for silvering a mirror. His process consisted of pouring a compound containing ammonia and silver onto the back of the glass. Formaldehyde removed the ammonia, leaving a shiny metallic silver surface that reflected the light. Today, most mirrors are made by evaporating metallic aluminium directly on the glass. What is the centripetal force? Force that keeps an object moving in a circle must be exerted by an external agent. What is dark energy?
for the first 10 billion years of the existence of the universe the attractive forces of gravity on matter both ordinary and dark slowed the expansion of the universe. But beginning about 5 billion years ago the universe began to expand at an increasing rate. Two studies of Supi movie have documented this acceleration. The cause of this expansion has been called dark energy, but the nature of dark energy is totally unknown. It interacts only via gravity and is very dilute. One possibility is that Einstein's general relativity has to be modified by the addition of a cosmological constant. Einstein himself considered such a constant, then discarded it, calling it his biggest blunder. The problem with such a constant is that particle physics estimates the value, in proper units, of 1. But the value required to explain the extra expansion is 10120. This huge discrepancy cannot be explained. What are streamlines? Lines that represent the flow of a fluid around an object or through another fluid. How does this happen? The rod attracts positive charges and repels negative charges. Neutral objects contain equal numbers of positive and negative charges. In a conductor the charges are free to move and so the electrons can be pushed to the far end of the object making it negatively charged and leaving the close end positively charged. An object that is neutral but has separated charges is polarized. What is a generation, NG, cell phone? One G analog voice phone calls. Two G digital signals with more simultaneous users. Three G able to receive television like video, video images. 4G very high speed networks. Can you do it? Standing on your toes moves your point of support in front of your center of gravity. So you will tip backwards. What is a galvanic cell? Combination of two different metals separated by a conducting solution. That produces a potential difference and thus a continuous flow of charge. Does voltage shock you? Signs around power plants and breaker boxes often state, caution, high voltage area. It is not voltage that can hurt you, it is the electrical current that flows.
through your body that can produce serious and sometimes fatal consequences. The Van de Graaff generator creates hundreds of thousands of volts. But produces such a low amount of current that the sparks it emits only cause muscles to tingle. What are very high frequency, VHF, waves? Frequency 30 MHz 300 MHz What is a motor? Converts electrical to mechanical energy current through multiple loops of wires on the armature in a magnetic field causes a force that results in rotation what is a de broglie wavelength Wavelength associated with moving particle x equals h slash mv. What is atomic and molecular physics? Study of single atoms and molecules that are made up of these atoms. What are the Van Allen belts? Charged electrons and protons from solar wind and cosmic rays entering Earth's magnetic field. Feel the Lorentz force that traps them into spiral orbits about the magnetic field lines. They create donut-shaped regions of charged particles called the Van Allen belts. The belts are concentrated around the equator and become thinner as they approach the poles. The two belts are located at 3,200 km and 16,000 km above the surface of Earth. What is the difference between laminar and turbulent flow? The film of fluid that touches the container does not move because of friction with the container's surface. But the fluid in the middle of the stream does. In laminar flow the transition from not moving to moving at full speed is continuous. Each thin film of water moves slightly faster than the one closer to the surface. In turbulent flow this transition from not moving to full speed motion occurs suddenly. And the water moves in tiny circles in this region. Laminar flow has more friction than turbulent. A baseball, for example, has more drag in the laminar flow region. How was the connection between electricity and magnetism discovered? The close connection between electric current and magnetic fields was discovered quite by accident. In 1820, Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted, 
1777-1851. Gave a lecture on the heating effects of an electric current on a wire. A compass happened to be near the wire and he was surprised to see the compass rotate when the current was on. He had been looking for connections between electricity and magnetism for several years. But expected that the compass would point away from the wire. Instead he found that the compass pointed in a circle around the wire. Above the wire it pointed perpendicular to the wire. Below the wire it also pointed in the perpendicular, but in the opposite direction. What is rotational inertia? See moment of inertia. What are quark generations? Each generation has two quarks, up and down in first, strange, and charm in second, top and bottom in third. What was the first type of bridge? The first type of bridge ever used was a beam bridge. This bridge was probably just a fallen tree that was used to cross a ravine or a small stream. The tree was probably supported by the riverbed or by a group of rocks. Beam bridges consist of a horizontal roadbed supported by vertical piers on the shores that are planted in the ground. Beam bridges are limited by the resistance of the roadbed to bending. What is psychoacoustics? Psychoacoustics, which connects acoustics with psychology, is the study of how the mind reacts to different sounds. This field of study is especially important to consumer product manufacturing. Because a consumer associates particular sounds with certain products or sensations. For example, People associate low-frequency rumbling sounds with power and torque. While higher-frequency sounds often represent high speeds and out-of-control occurrences. Psychoacoustics can play a major role in the development and commercial success of many products. What is turbulent? Flow of fast moving fluid or object moving fast through a fluid. Causes usually circular or helical motion of fluid. Where is the longest bridge in the United States? The longest bridge in the United States, a SUS pension bridge, ranks as the sixth longest bridge in the world. 
The Verrazano Narrows Bridge is between Staten Island and Brooklyn, New York. This bridge, completed in 1964, spans 1,298 meters, 4,260 feet. The span between the towers of the Mackinac Bridge that links the upper and lower peninsulas of Michigan at 1,158 meters. 3,800 feet, is shorter than that of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. But when measured by the distance between the cable anchorages it is the longest. Bridge in the Western Hemisphere The length of the entire bridge, shore to shore, is 5 miles.